Hello, everyone. Uh, we'll start shop at 4 p.m. just in the next two, three minutes. Thank you for your patience. Hello all, uh, good, uh, good evening everyone. Before I start, if somebody can just let me know, I am audible and clear. You are, Rita. Thank you, thank you. So hello all, a very good evening. Myself, Ekta, and on behalf of the Brenalytics team and our partner, VCS, on our roundtable, we welcome you all at reaping profits from industry 4.0 pulp and paper industry. So before we start the round table, there are a few guidelines that I would like to highlight and make you people aware of. Requesting all the attendees to be on mute when the speakers are taking the session. There would be a Q&A after each session where the attendees can ask their respective questions to the respective speakers. We'll be opening for the round table around 4, uh, 50 p.m so that where the participation would be invited from the senior leadership from the pulp and paper industry. So I would just like to highlight the guidelines. You need to raise your hands, unmute yourself and on your video, introduce yourself, your name, company, designation, and put your question. So to quickly start with, I would like to introduce our partner, VCS. VCS offers digitally intelligent solutions worldwide. It includes real-time monitoring, and analytics, IOT integration, edge analytics, digital logbook, and predictive analytics using AI ML. VCS takes the responsibility to engage with clients in opportunity assessment, calculating value of improvement, building of business blueprint, delivering required hardware, software, services, and support to ensure the improvement initiative is successfully implemented. Before we move on to our keynote, I would like to highlight why we all are here today. Digitalization is gradually transforming the way we produce products. We just so all the industries. We also will just start. Requesting everybody to please be on mute. That would be really helpful. Thank you. With all the industries embracing digital transformation, pulp and paper industry seems quite ready to engage and geared up to stay ahead of the competition. This roundtable will be focusing on how IIoT is playing a key role in the digital transformation for the paper and pulp industry and will change the way 
people communicate, consume, and do business by connecting all the participants in the value chain. Today, we have senior leaderships joining in today from various organizations to discuss the key challenges, opportunities, and smart factory industry 4.0 solutions that are designed to bring considerable improvements in the overall factory efficiency, product quality, operational cost, using data infrastructure, industrial IoT, and provide base for implementing effective AI technology platform. Now, I would like to invite Mr. Kamaldeep Singh, Executive Director and CEO, Value Chain Solution India, uh, uh, to share his insights on the thought or his thought leadership session. To speak about him, he's a strategic leader with more than 25 years of experience in operations and information technology management. He has worked with life science, metal and mining, chemical, cements, paper, pots, oil and gas companies to help them improve productivity, efficiency, and reduce operating cost through digital transformation in various areas. Over to you, Mr. Kamaldi, to take the thought leadership. Thank you, Ekta. Welcome all, and thank you for sharing your time, all the speakers and participants. It's a privilege to listen to all of you during the session. The session on how Industry 4.0 contributes in increasing profit. The thought which came that how we maximize particularly during challenging times. When we look at profit, we see there are two aspects to that. One is pertaining to smart products, pricing, expanding markets, and the other part is the cost. So today's focus uh, more will be on how do we reduce cost? What are the elements of reducing cost? So when we are talking about industry 4.0 journey, what we realized while working with clients, there are three major areas which uh, clients look at. Three key elements, I would say. One is data-driven decisions. So it means decisions are not based upon only experience, but there is data, there is insights from the data, and decisions are based upon that. And the second uh, portion is nurturing the talent. It means your own people need to take those decisions. It's not that a consultant goes, advise certain things, give suggestions. The shop floor people, the mill operators, they need to know what decisions need to be taken. And third, another important aspect is the collaboration. Within the organization, among different teams, maintenance, production, and across industry with the industry principal, data scientist, because they tell how to use data, what use cases or business cases we can implement. So when I'm talking about data, then there are two aspects to that. One is the IT data, another one is the OT data. Here we are talking about creating a data infrastructure where IT, OT data is put together. It is seen as one continuum. IT data is, for example, anything which is there in ERP, SAP, fleet management system, et cetera. And OT data is what our machines generate, the temperature, pressure. A typical paper machine has more than 4,000 data points, 4,000, 5,000 parameters which need to be managed. So these are the, every second the data is generated. So if we can contextualize this data with our IT landscape data, then there is a lot of insight of which can come out of that. And what value does it drive? This ITOT integration or creating the data infrastructure, reduction of setup times, reduction of energy costs, reduction of chemicals which we used, the utility cost goes down, the quality of product goes up, customer complaints, reduction in customer complaints. We are working with uh, certain industries uh, in paper where we have found that uh, uh, the, these are the improvements which have taken place. Uh, even the machine breakers have reduced. So how do we do that? And what is what has been our experience? I will request Mr. Pari to take us through the presentation and share various steps which you followed through this digital transformation journey. Thank you. Over to you, Ekta and Pari. Yeah, thanks, Kamali. Um, I hope uh, people can hear me clearly. Yes. Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. 
Uh, I'm just sharing my screen. Do let me know once uh, if you guys can see my screen. Sure. Yeah, Pari, we can see your screen. Okay. Um, good evening, everybody, and thanks for probably joining us today. Um, my name is Pari Subaya. Uh, I've been uh, working as in uh, implementing uh, ERP and MES solutions for probably for the last 15 years. I work as a key account manager in BCS. Um, so we, today we're going to talk about how we can probably reap benefits uh, with Industry 4.0. Somewhere with what where come a left off, I'm, I'm probably going to pick, up, pick it up from there. Uh, I know we have been in, in the fourth industry revolution uh, probably today. Uh, a couple of decades back, maybe we've been talking about the third industry revolution, how we can probably collect data, uh, which is like in different, different places uh, that gave birth to a lot of standalone systems uh, where we started collecting data. So which probably helped us uh, in moving towards a diagnostic approach uh, in our manufacturing. And um, with the current... Uh, technology, the way the world is moving in, today I can say that data is a new oil. It's become the most valuable asset for every company, right? Just not only in manufacturing, across every industry. So what can we do with Industry 4.0? What they're talking about is basically collecting all the data, putting them in probably in one place, uh, because accessibility is another major factor. So everyone today, we all sit in our own place with our the convenience space. People want things in their hand. So how are we going to access this data? That becomes a point number one. And two, what can we do with this data? Do a lot of analytics maybe, move from a diagnostic approach to a predictive approach. So for this, you need to probably build a data infrastructure. So we at BCS, with experience of working with different companies across the globe, with the final projects under our belt, have an extensive experience in IOD sensors and solution, working with a lot of system integrators uh, in, the, in the past decade or so. Uh, we help companies build a data infrastructure move them from probably uh, uh, from a diagnostic approach to a more of a predictive approach in their manufacturing sector and help them probably with the golden parameter profiling, et cetera. So that's, that's basically what we do in BCS. So moving on uh, to the case in point today, we are talking about paper and pulp industries. So McKinsey with the recent study is uh, identified that there's been a significant amount of growth and a significant amount of gains uh, when it comes to, you know, when we digitalize uh, a plant, which is somewhere close to 10 to 15%. Um, surprisingly, the 10 to 15%, the contribution to the 10 to 15% is not just about productivity or efficiency alone, right, from the shop floor. So even quality uh, assurance uh, department has probably contributed, the quality cost has come down, uh, asset health, so you can probably maintain, the maintenance department will probably contributed somewhere there, the maintenance costs have come down. Um, so on a whole, in a global market, they're saying 10 to 15% of gains, and uh, we're talking about Pi system, OSI soft Pi system, which has also been in, in a leading uh, a pair, you know, an application in the market, which 450 installations across the globe with various industries, you know, that they have, the experience that they have. So, so today we're going to talk about a case study, which BCS has done, uh, IDC. Uh, I don't think we, I need to give any more uh, in, introduction about IDC as a company. Everyone is aware of that. I'll probably go through quickly about the challenges that IDC was facing. Um, we do have data to a certain extent in, on the shop floor, but then probably they don't have real-time data uh, apart from one single area that they have. For example, there could be data available on the shop floor, process data, but the quality data is probably not available to, to an operator. Uh, when they have probably want to do an analysis, they have to probably run around to different uh, departments to collect data, which I mentioned earlier, we did that probably a couple of years, you know, decades back with a lot of standalone system collecting data. So bring them all together, if they have to do an analysis, was a mountain of a task. And data stitching takes a lot of time for them. And other point is if there is an, uh, uh, a customer complaint, if they have to probably go back in, in, you know, with the process and see where, what had happened, what has caused an issue, again, they have to go to different places to collect data, may not be as accurate as, you know, uh, the, the information that they're getting, the root cause analysis takes a lot of time. Uh, somewhere they probably get lost. So these are some of the challenges that IDC was facing. Right? So their main objectives was very simple. Everyone should be able to access data. 
any kind of data that they're looking for. So how can we achieve that? So probably they want to achieve that first thing. Right from an operator, probably to the managing director of the company, should have easy access to data. So how quickly probably we can have, you know, uh, see gains of profits out of implementing a system, right? So that was the second objective. Third, uh, the scale that they have, they probably want a system which they could easily, uh, you know, uh, in, implement in other areas as well, scalable system, and it should be user-friendly. So some of the objectives that IDC on a whole had it. So what we do in uh, VCS, in, in kind of an approach, probably a quick walkthrough. So we would probably do a site study, understand the ID landscape, try to build a business use case, which would probably give them an understanding of how, what kind of gains that they can get. Probably run a pilot, uh, show to the management, okay, this is was the, uh, you know, uh, benefit that you got out of this pilot and then roll it out to, you know, different plants and different lines that they have. So like I said before, so this probably uh, looks like, um, you know, in every any company, this is how an ID landscape looks like. So you can see a lot of, like Kamal mentioned, there's an OT layer, there's an ID layer, there is always data collected from all different places. Everything lies in desperate systems. So uh, which probably helped us to understand bits and pieces here and there, but there's always a linkage, right? From, from your OT to an IT, right? So there's always interconnectivity between the data that we have. So what is the area of opportunity? Bring them all to one place, make it a one-stop shop. With that data, we can probably make sure our decisions are not made with experiences, with trial and error methods, it probably more data-driven, factual uh, data that we have, which tells us what to do. Accessibility becomes another easy, uh, this thing for people, so anybody can access data anywhere. So somewhere that's waves a path, you know, for, for industry 4.0. So how does probably Pi fits in all together in, in this? So it acts as a point view between your OT and an IT layer. People, I know, I know that. My, so, uh, is this is, yeah. Thank you. So it acts as a conduit between a OT and ID layer. So you can collect data, put them all in one single place. We can talk to different systems, maybe uh, right from ERP and MES. Could be a data analytics system. It could be your PLCs and SCADA on the shop floor. So if I can talk to all those systems, collect data in one single place, do a lot of analytics from that, and then help people probably do a lot of gains. So um, OSA software been in the industry for the last 35, 40 years, which they are pioneers in, in, in this sector. Uh, moving on. So what, did, what are the areas that we probably targeted in IDC? Uh, we probably help them create a central line dashboard, which we probably look at in this uh, se uh, session today. Uh, we also probably help them uh, you know, implement a condition-based maintenance, uh, an energy consumption report, which probably tells them what, how much energy they're consuming, where they can probably reduce. Uh, your role of equipment efficiency has been monitored. So helps them probably increase their uh, equipment uh, usage or probably decrease if there is no use of it. Uh, the paper machine uptime downtime. So this is not only just in product production on the shop floor. This this tool can help. It can be implemented in various different departments as well. And imagine having all the data from different departments in one single place and analyzing it and making sure where we can probably reduce cost and which will have a, a lot of impact in you know in a day to day basis. So let's move back to center lining dashboards. This is one of the dashboards that we created for IDC. So this is one paper machine, PM4. You can see the grade. So every grade will have a different dashboard that you can see on here. Um, it is, there is a color scheme, which probably tells an operator whether the specific parameter value is in, within the range or which is better probably for their, you know, in, 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 in a more efficient range or it is out of range. So, and along with it, you can also see on the bottom, there are quality parameters, which tells him that, okay, this is what you're manufacturing. This is how the quality is getting affected. So this is probably helping give him more insight on what he does, take decisions quickly, more informed decisions rather, no, no trial and error, no, uh, no, not with experience. There are facts right in front of you. Uh, with that, they can probably have a lot of benefits uh, that we can build on. So this could be done with different grades as well. It also tells you a target value, which tells, okay, this target value is also built with the historical data that, you know, using Pi that they have, in, you know, gathered onto an historian, did a lot of analysis. Uh, maybe a target value was for a temperature could be 55 earlier, 
Now with analysis, they probably brought down to 53, which, which probably is more accurate compared to what they did earlier. So those kind of benefits are also being reaped uh, with OSI soft buy system being implemented in IDC. Uh, not only that, so we can probably build uh, a more intelligence onto the system as well. So that could be real-time data monitoring, real-time data access for everyone in the organization. There could be alerts and notifications or emails sent to people, uh, typically a paper industry, which is probably you know there for a couple of decades. Um, each and everyone is sitting in different places. The engineering guy would not know if, if a machine goes down. So probably there is an alert comes to him straight away so he can attend it right then and there with the, with the exact time. So you can see on the graph here, so the pre-pilot that we did, you know, the, the plywood losses have come really drastically after we implemented a buy system down here. So there's an 80% reduction in that uh, plywood losses. That's what we achieved with, uh, with IDC. Apart from that, these are some general uh, benefits or use cases that I can talk about. So eventually, uh, you know, in the, the coming session, so we have other speakers who's gonna cover what all we can do with IOD industry of four auto solution and using by what kind of benefits you can achieve. Um, I'll probably quickly like to summarize here uh, with IDC. So they had different systems. We had data available at different places. So they probably wanna bring them all to one place. Historical data was not available. Um, I guess somewhere DCS and SCADA can store what a couple of months or three months of data. So today they can have data for any number of years that they want to. Um, data accessibility was a huge problem. So what did they what did they do? So what we did basically was bring in a real-time data infrastructure, build it for them, and then on top of it, build an analytics or build more intelligence, manufacturing intelligence on top of it, which will probably tell them what is happening on real-time basis to everybody, right? So this made them achieve, like I said, 80% reduction in the loss of the supply bound and integration between all different systems, right? From MES to DCS to the ERP, your root cause analysis has become very, very easy and more quicker, rather I would say. So uh, we can see a testimony model from one of their colleagues from an uh, IDC. So they moved from descriptive to diagnostic and predictive to perspective. So. Somewhere in today's world, I think we're all moving down to more uh, predictive analysis with the data that we have in hand. So with that note, I would probably uh, like to thank you all for, for the opportunity and thank you for listening to me. So that's it from my end. Uh, Ikta, over to you. Yes. Thank you so much, Pari and uh, Kamandeep for sharing your insights. Uh, audiences, if we have any questions with them, we will, can surely take that up. So I have already shared the guidelines. You need to raise your hands. Unmute yourself and put your question. So we'll wait for a while, Pari, to people to have questions. Sure, sure. Yeah. Also, to make it engaging uh, audiences, what we can do is you can also put your questions on the chat box. So we can take it from there also. So any questions, please put raise your hands. I have one question. Yes, Mr. Suresh, please take it forward. Yeah, my basic question is how to manage the cyber security if you have big data, how to manage the huge data, it is a continuously recording and continuously we are capturing the data, how to manage the cyber security, this is the big challenge for the, whether it is IT, OT combination platform, that I want to know from the, the speaker, any one of the speaker to yeah. guide us. What should be the measures to be taken to take care of the cybersecurity when you're handling the big data? Uh, Praveen, you would like to take this or uh, you want to basically Kamal can take it? Uh, maybe I would be happy and Kamal can add on. Uh, Suresh, I think uh, there's a broader perspective about when we really look at uh, bringing the control center data to IT and making it more uh, visible. Uh, one of the important aspects we really need to see when we really talk about cybersecurity and laws and uh, you know policies uh, to be adhered, it is one point number one, it is more towards the organization's IT policy decisions. How do you really want to manage? Number two is about the selecting the right products, which can be, uh, which, which have the, all the cybersecurity laws uh, prevalence, you know, in terms of uh, working and everything. Uh, Pi system in the sense, you know, when we really look at the example of what uh, Pari explained about uh, in ITC, uh, it's been connected to all the control center, control systems, connecting all the OT data part of it to the IT world of it, integrating with SAP. 
uh, they have taken all the purview cyber security uh, policies uh, right uh, putting up the firewalls in the proper places and apart from that pi system itself acts like an uh, you know a barrier wall between uh, you know ot and it um, i would like to say that you know nuclear plants in us and everything use pi system exorbitantly so uh, th this is uh, a broader perspective needs to be designed the architecture needs to be designed and you know people uh, from uh, kamadeep's uh, security team and uh, oss soft team can really help in uh, making sure that you know those things are added properly hope that answers suresh yes yeah sure thank thanks. you thanks praveen thank you so much uh, for answering the question so uh, we can take the question uh, as it comes uh, at the later stage uh, one one question i have just uh, sorry for the interruption uh, i have asked one question to pariji whatever last presentation you have shown the idc has done the wet end study breaks analysis so the breaks analysis we can predict when the break will happen the advancedly we can uh, do a real time analysis and we can predict it when the break will happen based on certain uh, inputs it is possible in the live example of uh, when running the mission uh, you're talking about breakdown of a machine right if i'm right no no right. no breaks break while running the paper in a continuously running the paper there okay. should be a certain reason there should happen one break disconnect so, the paper from the yeah. mission uh yeah take it up again um, uh, so if you really look at it you know we divide this into three components okay and uh, i think you know mariana our industry principal is there uh, in the call and she has a quick uh, run through with this particular aspects about sorry to, sorry sorry uh, pardon concept uh we have mariana uh, our industry principal also in the call uh, who will be taking up a small couple of uh, small presentation uh, post uh, within some few times uh, okay. now uh, where you will be taking you to the data driven strategy about you know how various paper and pulp companies actually are working on right okay. uh, as i said you know one is about managing the data then uh, visualizing that particular data and then creating a predictive layer to see when the paper break or those things happens so okay. can we talk a uh, question or kamaldi if you want to answer this question further so no what my question is are you are you hearing yes yes we can hear you suresh no. so what i am asking my question is when we are integrating it ot systems when the actually i have introduced myself first uh, just sorry for the interruption i am suresh babu i am representing from uh, quantum papers i'm working as a vice president business excellence my question is when paper mission the paper is reeling on the roll if i can capture the real time data can we have a analysis when the opportunity of the break will happen some reason the break will happen one hour after i can predict it by doing this uh, yeah. artificial intelligence you can say you can say real time data analysis this will be helpful for us yeah mr suresh babu let me take this question see for any prediction there is a couple of independent variables and couple of dependent yes. variables when we are looking at paper break there is lot of data which is required from different sources of data so that we can see the predictive model can be built it is possible to build a model only thing okay. is we need to know what are the data points what you okay. have for example in case of itc we were taking data not only from mes or sap there is a parsi tech system there are other system there is a log books there is a quality control system we need to what all data is available if we say the data points are less then the prediction becomes that much difficult but if you have more data points and more history of data where the breaks are also recorded that this particular time the paper break happened and that was the circumstances at that point of time what were the parameter values and which grade it happened once we have a pile of data then it is possible to build an algorithm and what praveen just said that we have mariana here she will also share her experience word over in various paper companies where she is guiding and supporting Uh, OSA soft pie implementation, so she'll throw more light on this particular case. 
but as per our experience on building models in predictive getting the data at one place and the relevant uh, is very very crucial for that but it okay. is possible if i have to ask. okay thank you yes. thank you thank you thank you mr suresh and thank you mr mm -hmm. kamli for sharing your insights now i would like to invite mariana sadeen industry principal for forest paper products at osi soft she works closely with all the forestry pulp paper and packaging companies around the world she goes on to say the forest and the paper industry is transforming itself with new digital technologies and she is very excited to be part of that process along with mariana we have praveen jadhav to speak about him he is a country manager managing business for all south asia countries at oss soft now part of aviva praveen has been working with oss soft since 2017 prior to that OSS Soft he has more than 18 years of experience working with technology organizations to solve business challenges for a large enterprise and utility organization and they are going to share their insights on importance of critical data management over to you mr praveen and ms maria to take over the session thank you thank you and, uh, thanks for support in analytics and uh, bcs team and and uh, in, uh, would like to invite everyone out uh, this been a great forum where uh, you know we can exchange lot of data uh, in terms of how other customers are working uh, one of the important aspects we look at oss soft uh, if we have been industry leaders from last 40 years uh, you know supporting all the enterprises uh very importantly supporting their operations and uh, ensuring that there is an improvement in that uh, with the data driven decisions uh, uh, making the data available for all the operations teams um you know breaking the barrier towards uh, getting this data integrating with it part of it and making more value out of it so that you know from a business perspective it say makes sense um uh, really looking at we've been proud you know top 9 of uh, 10 of 9 companies uh, paper and pulp uh, use uh, uh, platform pi system for their all operations and itc in their complete digital journey i think you know mariana has been there one of the important aspects i love about uh, the overall working is uh, you know we we work very closely with the companies uh, with all the companies in terms of making it more towards a consultative approach are uh, driving more towards how the business operations can make more use cases uh, how it is going to help and everything and uh, that's where i think uh, mariana is here and uh, I, i would um, you know request her to take the session and uh, give more perspectives about how the global paper and pulp companies are actually uh, you know driving their digital transformation or you know importance of the data in industry 4.0 over to you mariana thank you praveen and thank you everyone for your time um pari did a great introduction into the topic and i appreciate the the questions um i think at the end we at the end of the session we're going to have more time for questions so uh if you get something if you have a comment uh, you can put it in the chat and that way we can also engage with what's happening at at the time that we're talking so <clears throat> what i have shared or uh, prepared for you today has to do with the importance of data management for industry 4.0 we got a great introduction on the roadmap and vision for itc i want to share with you another kind of use cases from other companies around the world doing uh, or working on digital initiatives <clears throat> but first i want to talk about okay why operations data is so important without operations data industry 4.0 doesn't happen so we need this kind to be able to capture this kind of information to move forward any initiatives that we may have right now you know there are several trends in the industry regarding digitalization big data iot you name it all those things and and that is very true there are more sensors available there are <clears throat> more ways to connect to those sensors there are more ways to connect to data in general but being able to do it in a disciplined way and in a way that makes sense for the organization is the most important thing some people believe that the main goal of industry 4.0 is to have a digital twin of your of your operations i actually disagree with that i don't think that should be the main goal but the main goal like pari was saying before has to do with connecting the value chain being able to 
capture that information and provide you with insights to make improvements in process productivity, asset health and reliability, redu reduce the process variability and improve the product quality. And of course, impact in a positive way the sustainability KPIs that we have available. So this industry we know is very intensive in the use of resources. So any improvements we can do to make the process more efficient will help us to uh, have a better impact into the environment. So reducing the consumption of water, of energy, and also of emissions from our processes. So <clears throat> connecting us to this value and the value chain requires that we break the different data silos. So speaking to, we need to connect data from the ERP to, with the labs, the MES, data coming from the mach machines directly. It's a very, very important aspect. And <clears throat> right now we are talking about, well, how do we do it with technology? How do we automate this process? And of course, we have to have a data platform that is able to collect and store data from very, very, very long periods of time at the right speed in a clean way and in an accurate way. We do this straight from the source. So based on the variables that you're collecting, um, it was a, there, there was a number put out. A paper machine has 4,000 to 5,000 variables uh, of data, and, th and that is very true. And when we look at the whole process, if you have an integrated meal with a pulp and paper operation, you can have probably ten, uh, tens of thousands of data points. So being able to collect the data, the frequency that this information is happening in a clean way and in an accurate way has to be able to be managed by the system that is connecting the data. We need to be able to add context and organize the raw data that is coming to the system. This will make it understandable, not only to the systems consuming that data, for example, uh, AI or machine learning algorithms have been a part of the conversation already. So they need to be able to understand the data that is coming from operations, but also people need to be able to understand the data that is coming from operations. Not everyone on the operation side is familiar with um, the tax from the control system, for instance. So we need to make it understandable for people to be able to search and consume the information that they are, they are having access to. We need to be able to share the data between different departments and also with other suppliers. So some of the, um, of the promises of Industry 4.0 has to do with building a community of partners based on data to make data-driven decisions. So sharing the information securely, cybersecurity was also another question, um, it's of, of utmost importance. And of course, the availability of data, being able to visualize it at any time on demand and <clears throat> having notifications that will make the data more proactive in order to make uh, timely decisions. So all this needs to happen on the technology side. There needs to be a way to automate it, uh, to automate this data flow process. And we believe the Pi system does exactly that. Right now, we are leveraging on-prem uh, technologies to do that. But also, as we, as we start seeing an explosion on new IoT sensors, the cloud technology is becoming to the equation and are starting to get relevance um, into how to manage the data, how to aggregate it and put it forward either for advanced analytics or for visualization at different points in the, in, in the company. <clears throat> now, one side is the technology. So I already covered uh, more or less the technology aspect of things, but Industry 4.0 also touches on new roles and responsibilities from the IT and the OT teams. There's need to be more collaboration. There's need to be more synergies. So it actually changes the way we work. I don't know from the audience here who is on the IT side and who is on the OT side, 
but I'm hoping that we have people from both sides of the family. And, and that is very encouraging because that tells me that there is some kind of collaboration already happening in your organizations. There needs to be a plan for change management and in, in the data structure, in the data, uh, in the data context. And this is important because in our, in our system, and one of the things that we, that we like to push forward is the need for standardization of the data so that everyone has um, kind of the same methodologies for accessing the data, for retrieving information. So if somebody is looking for paper breaks, for instance, that was a use case that was put forward, uh, there is a common way to look at paper breaks and the variables that impact that kind of that kind of issue in the operations. So if I'm looking at paper breaks, well, now what kind of change management of what, what kind of processes need to happen if I also want to look at the different recent codes that are um, that are different for each of the mills. So there has to be standardization, but also flexibility and a way to manage the changes that the mills in particular want to do to the overall data model that has been put together uh, for them. And the other aspect has to do with the process on how we implement this, uh, the digitalization initiatives. Um, I do believe it has to be um, in an incremental way. There has to be a, a progression in the sophistication and the complexity of the, of the models. And it is a journey. Um, if you remember the quote from, from ITC, they said, well, from diagnostic to descriptive, to predictive, to prescriptive, it is a journey. And you have to go through each one of those levels in a very disciplined way to be successful and to reap the benefits at the different stages of the progress. So all this needs to be part of the equation. And I'm glad that we have a partner like VCS to guide us through that um, actual implementation. So now I wanna talk about three use cases very quickly of companies that went from calculated asset performance, which is a very common KPI, to predicting health needs of the, uh, of the important equipment in, at the mill. Another one from reporting on sustainability KPIs to meeting climate neutrality. So they actually, they wanted to impact very heavily the KPIs that they have in energy and water consumption. And the other one from having an operational awareness kind of reporting that pr probably some of you already have at the end of the month to prescribing actions to make the process, um, process productivity much better by improving product quality. And as you can see here, I put this in a circle because this is a virtuous cycle. Going from one uh, run initiative from the other and then to the next, it is a constant, it is a constant work. This is a constant evergreen um, benefit that you get when you look at Industry 4.0 uh, as a program, not necessarily just as a project or as a fashion that might be happening right now. So if we take this seriously and we take this as a program, we can go from one initiative to the next. So going from operational awareness to prescriptive actions, this is Monday release liner. So actually what they did or the problem that they have is or had was that um, they, they have you know, hundreds of, of grades of paper running through the coding machines. They wanted to be able to tell the operators, which is a different generation of operators, um, how to run the machine better based on the actual conditions of the machines. We know that over time, the machine performance degrades, even if we give it maintenance. And, and it just degrades because you know equipment gets old. And, uh, and also the, grade, the, the paper grades uh, changes over time. There are different needs, different markets. So this specification for the recipes needs to be updated constantly. And <clears throat> with machine learning, what Monday Release Liner was able to do was to have a dynamic model for, for these recipes and being able to tell the operators the optimum um, parameters to run a specific coding machine. 
based on the grade that was running. So, and, and they decided to do machine learning because really in, in Austria where this happened, there is a deficit on the talent for, um, for operations. There, there is a, uh, a generation of operations, of operators with a wealth of experience that is already retiring and not enough new engineers coming into the mills to run the same machines. And even if they come, they don't have the experience that the former generations had. So they needed to, to have a tool to help them get up to speed and to be able to run the machines at, a, at an optimum way. So the challenge is how to uh, continue the improvement of the product quality without big in investments in, in capital, right? So without putting new equipment or without putting that many new sensors. So the answer was to use a Pi system as a foundation for the data. So capturing all the data and put it in a data model using machine learning algorithms that will predict the quality of the product before the results from the lab came back um, up to 24 hours. So, and they wanted to do it with, a certain, with an accuracy of the model of over 80%. So once they met that threshold, they gave this information to the operators, started putting up the prescribed parameters to run the machine. And today we are seeing that they have an 8% additional rolls of good quality coming out of the coding machines, um, which is an increase of eight points in, in the performance of the machine. So, you know, you can make the translation of what did that mean to you in terms of benefits and, and, and uh, saving cost, but for Monday Release Liner was a game changer, at least from this first site that they started working with. So if we look at the use case of ITC that right now they have a center line in dashboard that is working great. Well, if we wanna move further, we can take that data, use it to put it in a data model and then start prescribing the operating parameters for the machines based on the grade that is running at the time, just like Monday Release Liner did. But um, I think uh, it was mentioned earlier, we need to have the right information in, in history so that we have enough data to train those machine learning models. Now, the other use case is from uh, Verso Paper, and they are focusing on water and energy consumption, not only to meet environmental KPIs, but also to reduce the cost of operations. So the thing about sustainability is that sustainability is actually good business because it helps us reduce the cost of operations. And in the case of Verso Paper, first they started very simple with creating a balance of water consumption throughout the mill. Right now, I'm pretty sure you have an idea of how much water you are consuming. Hopefully you know how much water you are consuming by ton. But in the case of Verso, they created a holistic water consumption model, which not everyone has. You probably have it by process area, by piece of equipment, but having a holistic um, water consumption model helps tremendously to know if I am consuming more here or less of this part of the process, well, how does that impact my evaporators? Or how does that impact my paper machine consumption? So, or, or evaporation of the paper machine, if it, that has to be part of the balance. So um, that's where paper, Versa paper started. But after they had that holistic model, they were able to use that as the starting point to create a data model and they use uh, MATLAB to, to build a mass balance and, um, and putting the, the equations of the, of the process to predict the water consumption for critical equipment in the process. So the upper picture is that mass balance that they, that they put together first to provide the operators with an insight of how much water they were consuming and how much they were impacting other process area. And the image at the bottom is a very quick view based on the schedule, the prediction of water consumption that they, that they needed for, that, um, for, for the production of the day. And of course they have limits on how much water they wanna consume. 
and you can see a green and red kind of light to let them know um, whether or not they were consuming within the targets that they had set for them. At the end, what they really wanted to do by understanding the water consumption was to reduce the energy consumption because we know energy and water go hand to hand. In the case of Verso paper, they are, they are in Maine. So in the winter times, the water that comes into the mill is at freezing temperature. So they have to raise the temperature of that water to uh, production temperatures and, and that costs a lot of money. Um, so by having an understanding of the water needs and by being able to optimize the water consumption within the process, they were able to reduce the water consumption in 20% and the energy consumption in 9%. So that in times where natural gas prices are high, saves a ton of money uh, for, this for this company. And then the last one that did something similar by, integrated, by integrating uh, KPIs from different process areas is Georgia Pacific. And the big difference with Georgia Pacific is that they did it corporate wide. So they went to all the different corrugated cellulose plants that they have around uh, the United States and they implemented a single way to look at OEE, so overall equipment effectiveness. And you can do this because once you start tracking, go ahead, the productivity and the quality and the downtime of the machines, you're able to have dashboards that allow you to benchmark uh, or to look apples to apples, what are the differences between the operations of, uh, of the different sites. So I see, for instance, uh, ITC going this route where they would like to benchmark different paper machines or different process areas uh, across the different sites that they have and prioritize where they wanna take actions, where they wanna make improvements, just like Georgia Pacific is doing because they already have the foundation to be able to do that. And then when we, when we look at the asset health, in the case of Estora and so they also started with, well, let's do condition-based maintenance. So by looking at the performance of the asset, I want to know um, when is, in this case, they, they have a pump. When is a pump degradating in performance? But Estora and so when it stepped further, they were running already CBM for about a year before they put that information into a data model to prescribe the threshold for um, the performance curves. Very similar to the Monday release liner example, where we know the performance changing, changes along, um, along, the, along time, because again, equipment get old, data models changes. So they had a dynamic model to calculate the performance curve that in this case is in the center of the, of the screen, it is the red line. That is the performance curve being calculated by a, by a dynamic model. And then the blue curve is the current performance of that same pump. So once there is a variance big enough, then there is a, a notification sent out to the, S, to the um, maintenance systems, in this case with SAP PM. And, uh, and that way you trigger an automatic uh, work order to start the maintenance, uh, the maintenance cycle for that pump. And, and these are very simple examples on how you start capturing data, making it visual or visible, and then put in a data model that will give you a prescription on what to do next or how to make the data actionable at the time that you see a, a important, an important deficit or important variance in data. So <clears throat> in summary, operational data, as you see, is fundamental for Industry 4.0. Without operations data, it's going to be really, really hard that you go into any digitalization improvements that you may have uh, in mind for your operations. I would say focus on the areas of value. Give priorities for those areas that will give you uh, the most benefit. So here we talk about process productivity, asset health, um, environmental KPIs. 
And it is a journey and go step from step. I know that we all want to go to the shiny object. You know, we want a digital twin with uh, a 3D view and augmented reality, but we cannot get there if we don't understand the data that we have today. And if we don't have enough automation in our, in our uh, mails to make it happen. So we start with awareness, manage by exceptions, by creating these notifications, and then start forecasting um, the data points to be able to optimize your operations. So with that, this is our contact information. Uh, if later on you have questions or comments, we're real happy to take them. And I hope I'm good in time, Ekta, I'm all done. So we're yes, ready to take yes. questions. You are almost out of time. So thank you, Mariana and Praveen for sharing your insights. So audiences, uh, we can quickly take a question with Mariana, if any. So please raise your hands and introduce yourself and put your question. So we'll wait for a moment, Mariana, for the audiences. Yes, please uh, feel uh, free to put your questions. We are here to, we are having thought leaders who will definitely answer your queries. So anyone? I think it looks like, nice yeah. You can also put it in the chat if that yes. is easier. I've already mentioned that uh, anybody has a question, they can uh, just type in the chat box and we can take it from there itself. Okay, so it looks like Mariana, you were quite clear with your communication and it was quite clear, interesting presentation. So maybe we'll have more questions when the, uh, we open the floor for the open discussion. So that's where the real suggestions would come in and the insights would flow in. Yeah, so thank you again, Mariana and Praveen for being here and sharing your thoughts. So now I would like to open the floor for the open discussion on leveraging the power of industrial IoT, a game-changing perspective, and would like to invite speakers to share their thoughts about the need for smart manufacturing and the opportunities of Industry 4.0 for the pipe and paper with a focus on the elements like smart equipment, networking and connectivity, value chain integration, smart products and data analytics. So before we move on, uh, Mr. Mukul Varma is here. Mukul Varma is the executive vice president uh, works with JK Paper. He is here for a short while now because he has an important uh, meeting away. So Mr. Mukul too, I'll quickly start with you to share your thoughts on the same. Thank you. Hi, hi everyone. Thank you, Ekta. Uh, it is my time to leave. I said 16.55, I leave and you are giving me a chance to speak now. Just point is that uh, there are many things. It's a top-driven activity going on in all the paper industry or any of the industries where we are talking about implementing the latest technology trends. Uh, but we have to see to it the baseline at the floor level, how people are equipped with, how, how much they are aware of and what level of data or uh, data capturing uh, systems they have. Today we don't have even level one, we don't have PLCs in certain places, we don't have SAP in place where the data are being captured, uh, we don't have MES system into a lot of industries where you capture. Uh, Mr. Suresh Babu was talking about uh, web break. Again, there are many breaks where it happens because of the deposits or something. So even if we go in for modeling or something, so those data are not captured. If those data are not captured, then it will not be built up into the modeling part and they will not be predicted. So, and whatever models these days are been built, they are really helpful. Uh, definitely one should go in for these type of, but awareness uh, in the people uh, who are the owners of the area, uh, they should be that conversant with the benefits which they will be reaping out of uh, these uh, modeling. Maybe 25, 30 years back, it was TPM uh, time it was going everybody that people have to work on floor. Then Six Sigma came into where, uh, where the set points were uh, uh, calculated with different DOE technology, doing sort of design of experiment, something that was specific to a process and setting set points. 
now we are getting into the analytics part we are getting into the predictive uh, mode and for these things there are certain places where we don't have plc where the iot comes into picture where we capture the informations which are not connected to the equipment or something but it impacts your uh, processes so where in the iot is coming into picture uh, similarly like uh, uh, there are sensors which we need to put into ma ma manually when the pro operator is operating they see a lot of things happening but uh, uh, they sometimes feel that it should also come into modeling part but if the data are not sent uh, and the correct information are not sent the models don't work well so the strike rates are very less sometimes uh, for web break or something the what do you call strike rate may be 30% 35% they will give you false alarms also that web is going to means sheet paper is going to break but it will not break so a lot of things are there it is a long journey and uh, that exp uh, that expertise cannot be built up in the people who are the owners of the production or something we need to get certain people who are good into data science data analytics big data analytics doing the modeling part wherein these people have given presentation they come into picture but at the grassroots level we need to make the unit in charge is aware of the importance of those along with that we need to start building up level 1 level 2 automation level 3 mes system sap in place certain places iot is to be brought into so that is my insight if not with the paper i have spent around 28 29 years with the steel industry there also the system remains same in paper industry also i am seeing same uh, sometimes it is top driven that the senior management says you have to implement it and people are not accepting it so the uh ownership doesn't is not there so somebody has to come up into training uh, giving small small we come up as you come up and give a very big picture of uh, big analytics something uh, we should start with very small small things introducing iot iot has not come up into to that extent certain places remote things which we are not capturing and bring, making life easy of people so apart from big uh, data analytics or uh, predictive tools i feel the company should come up with a small small things also wherein uh, which are cheaper in the on the pocket and it helps the operator to ease out the things end of the day acceptance is only when operator feels certain benefit immediately his work is reduced something so no. those type of things are there so i my request to marina or maybe Kamaldeep ji or any other people who were there, Praveen. So bring in certain things which are very, very at the grassroots level, which will help people, operators, to make their life easy. So that's all from my side because I have another meeting with my HO at five five o'clock. So sorry for leaving this meeting. Any queries of anybody who have, uh, I'm ready to answer few of them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mikul, for sharing your insights, sir. Uh... Uh, do we have any uh, anyone to share their thoughts on what uh, Mr. Mukul Verma shared? Yeah, I would like to talk about it. I yes. think it was very insightful. One of the incidents comes to my mind when ITC was evaluating what to do. They also talked about the same question. They said whether it is possible to implement in my environment. Will my people be able to understand the tool technology and they to the changes required in operations. So that is where the pilot comes quite handy. That do a small, take a baby step, make sure there is a benefit which operator, supervisor, they realize, unit had realized, and only then the system is well adopted. I think it was very well said, uh, uh, Mr. Mukul. Thank you for your- Just to add on uh, with Amandeep's point here, uh, I remember my visit to Badrachalam, uh, Mr. Mukul Varma, I mean, like, you know, just wanted to share after this uh, central line dashboards uh, POC, uh, you, you rightly articulated, it is very, really important to look at a uh, border picture, but then take the small steps to make sure that, you know, we are going in the right direction. That's number one. And also ensure that we are covering three aspects. One is people, existing system, and also to ensure that it is not disrupted. Um, uh, so I, I still remember I had a call with Mariana at seven o'clock in the evening when uh, her time bringing up all the operations people of around 20 people in the uh, all the paper uh, right from, uh, you know, who are operating the uh, operations and everything. Kamaldeep's team was there in Ahmedabad. 
So we were kind of brainstorming on all the sessions, what could go wrong, what are the various things we should take up, what are the priorities set out. Uh, I think uh, you you brought out the right things uh, on the table to ensure that you know that could be the right way to look at the digital transformation, our industry 4.0, our IoT, whatever jargons you name it, but then it has to be inclined with all the processes. Thanks for bringing up that topic. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Uh, so before we move on, uh, yeah. Thank you, thank you, please. I'm uh, parting off this uh, session. Thank you. Thank you, thank, thank you, Mr. Mukul. For being here, thank you for your time. So before uh, we move on uh, to other uh, uh, senior leadership for round table, I would like to understand any insights coming in from uh, Value Chain Solutions from Mr. Shrenik or Mr. Kamaldeep, over to you. Yeah, Kamal, you want to basically show some highlights? Yeah, I think it is the experience which comes quite uh, like we were talking about uh, giving the L1 systems are not there or data is not getting captured or whether people will adopt the solution or not, whether they'll be able to take benefit of whatever technology is handed over to them. Uh, the point there is uh, the benefit they are saying is as good as it would So we need to see, we need to try that in a smaller one paper mill and make sure that run a pilot for three months or four months, make sure people understand what is the value coming out of the system. So once they realize the value, there is a lot of traction come. We have seen that in ITC, they were evaluating various things to make sure the technology which they select is good enough because it is like a marriage. You, you have to work with the technology and it's a journey, digital transmission journey. The tool has to be good, the, it has to be scalable. If, from one paper mill to seven, 10, or various units. And it should be integratable, vendor agnostic, various automation layers can be integrated. All those parameters, there is a huge evaluation with fund in IT before they uh, finalize that, okay, we are going ahead with this project. So that's what I can offer uh, as insight in our experience of implementing yeah. at ITC. And, and just to add to what Kamal said, Ekta, I would just like to add a couple of more points. Uh, when we do kind of a POC kind of a stuff, it's it's basically a joint effort between both the teams. We cannot say it's just the partner or the customer. Both the teams have to really jointly, closely work to ensure that we drive the success of the POC to ensure that the management really sees the benefit out of implementing the larger systems that we are talking about. So the POC is definitely a stepping stone, uh, a small step towards moving in the right direction as far as enabling and uh, installing and deploying the right kind of technology. Yes. Thank you, Shrenik, and thank you, Kamandeep. Now I would like to have insights coming in from Mr. Anil Kumar, Executive Director and CEO, Shreyans Industries Limited. So Mr. Anil Kumar, uh, what are your thoughts, please? Yeah, good afternoon, uh... I represent Shriyansh Industries Limited. This is basically a mid-sized paper mill. So our journey has been, uh, as uh, said earlier, it was started with a very, very old machine. In fact, it was a second-hand machine imported from Belgium way back in 79-80 with the open head box, table rolls, all open system and running at hardly 160 meters per minute. But over a period of time, we have uh, uh, gone on a journey where we uh, did modernize the machine today. Today we run at about 750 meters per minute, the same machine, which was 160 meters. And with the almost the latest uh, technologies in all the sections, starting from head box, the table, the press part, and similarly the stock preparation and the press uh, and the paper, uh, the uh, pulp mill also. So our first experience with automation, you may say, was when we put up a QCS system way back in 1995. We were almost the first mill in the uh, mid-sector, mid-segment, mid where a uh, QCS system supplied by Walmart Canada was put up. And uh, what I am trying to say is that uh, we did take smaller steps, but the benefits were immense, and uh, which uh, encouraged us to go on step by step to reach a stage where most of the systems are automated today right from stock preparation till uh, my paper machine uh, calendar or the pop reel. There is hardly any human inter intervention today and it is all automatic. But uh, industry 4.0 is uh, still uh, some distance away where because we have local controls, local sensors, local controls and through DCS 
DCS systems and PLC systems. But uh, uh, going to where artificial intelligence or IOTs are put in place, that is, I think, uh, a little far off from us because we are uh, comparatively much smaller uh, organization. But we are seriously looking into this because our experience has been, we have been very progressive in our thoughts, uh, irrespective of the size we were. But we are today uh, one of the most modern machines. Uh, maybe interesting to share, this is a 1958 machine. If you uh, talk about it, this is uh, almost 60 years old machine. But today the features are comparable to a very, very good latest machine in all the things starting from a hydraulic uh, uh, press, uh, hydraulic head box with the cross direction controls, uh, state of art uh, table, a shoe press, uh, closed drawers, and then uh, heated calendars and everything. It is uh, a lovely machine today. And as I said, they're from starting from 30 tons, we produce about 160, 170 tons per day from the same machine. So journey has been very, very interesting. And we have seen the benefits of uh, uh, taking away the human control and putting the automation wherever possible. Now the question is, do we go a step further? You know, further? Where, where uh, even machines talk to machine through IOTs or artificial intelligence, because data points are many. Uh, we have individual localized controls, local controls, local uh, uh, sensors, but uh, uh, do we integrate it and to, so that a predictive models can be prepared for our, uh, uh, we shall be interested, but uh, uh, as I said earlier that looking into the size of the uh, plant, our investment capacities, and then uh, uh, a commensurate benefit flowing into the uh, operations. But let me assure you, that uh, if you bang, start on this journey of automation, starting journey of uh, artificial intelligence, the, the scope is immense, the, the benefits are immense. That is my personal experience. We did go for a shoe press when nobody was doing a shoe press, especially for mid-size mills and agro-based mills. Our raw deals are agro-based mills. And we uh, achieved almost 20% increase in production with the same machine, single equipment, uh, the modern equipment gave us 20% increase, uh, which was much beyond my expectations also. So uh, once uh, the certain systems are top driven, where top managements are interested and have a uh, kind of open dialogue with the people down at the operator's level, and then a good consultant coming in, good uh, expert. Mariana put it to very, very uh, nicely with the, her experiences, where, uh, and Kamaldeep also, a, uh, kind of pilot kind of a model where the benefits become very, very seeable. People can visualize that uh, these are, see, I remember that we had the manual accounting uh, all throughout. And once we went in for ERP system, everybody registered it because uh, said, no, no, nothing can be done. We are very happy whatever we are doing today. And uh, I being at the top, I said, nothing doing. I also don't know what ERP is. But I don't know everybody else is doing it, it must be good. Otherwise, it would have failed a long time back. So if you go with this belief that similar things have been tried, have worked, and uh, uh, go with that uh, kind of belief in you and see, percolate that belief down to the operator's level, these systems do work. And uh, we do look forward to that maybe through you, maybe some other partners. But yes, there is a journey worth taking. Uh, thank you so much. That was my uh, take on this. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Anil. Yeah. Uh, great insights, great thoughts. So uh, anybody on uh, Mr. Anil's thoughts, anybody would like to add? Praveen, you like to share your views on Mr. Anil Kumar's insight? I think uh, uh, one of the important aspects uh, Mr. Anil Kumar touched upon, uh, you know, starting up small and, you know, uh, making the things. Uh, we've been seeing from our uh, customer's journey um, you know, it take about uh, a smaller portion of work and then, you know, really looking at uh, making the overall thing automized. And then one of the things even Mr. Mukul Marwa touched about is about automation part of it, whether, you know, we do have automation at all layers. I think that's the scenario for everyone. Even in fact, if, if we take an example of ITC, they also have the same situation that everything is not automated. So probably, you know, there could be a 
a hybrid way of looking at making uh, uh, things automated, working manual, and very important point which Mr. Anil Kumar talked about is about how do we really transform the people who are going to use this? The operations team, uh, making them aware about the importance, how it is going to help them in their day-to-day -day operations, how it is going to uh, really make them uh, more effective and uh, efficient in the overall working. That, that's that's kind of an experience that Milek only talks about. Thanks, Mr. Yeah. yeah, thank you. I, I, speaking of the people, I mean, there, there is a need for reskilling, right? To providing new skills to the people that are already in the mills. But I wonder, and, and I haven't had the opportunity to visit the mills in, in India, but I wonder if, um, you know, you're, you're going through the same generational change that the mills in Europe and the mills in North America are, are having? And, and that's that's an honest question. Is, is that an issue? Uh, so my, my feeling is that uh, people are willing to learn. Uh, people may be illiterate, but they are not idiots really. Uh, they are quite wise. See, education, I'm talking about the operator level. They may not be very literate uh, in their outlook, but they are not idiots. They are very, very knowledgeable. See, uh, if you go through the digital journey of the country, India, we are talking about a big digital change. Even at rural level, they may be illiterate, but they are very, they have adapted to digitalization very, very fast. So I don't have any issue on to the skill part of it. It is the uh, kind of acceptance of that uh, change. Skill they will acquire. Uh, people are good at acquiring skills. Yeah. I would just like to add, it's the acceptance of change and probably uh, the knowledge of what, need, what is the right thing to do. Uh, the exposure to new technologies, tools, IoT platform, all that put together. Mm -hmm. But yes, as uh, Anil, Mr. Anil Kumar is saying that people are willing to adopt new things. Actually, we have seen that people are very enthusiastic, Mariana to get into new technologies, new tools. In India, that is the probably the culture. You say it is the yeah. IT hub. Everyone try to do something new. That, okay, let's get home to that. We are talking about industry point to AI, ML. We want to get into that, to understand how this technology works, what benefit it brings on the table. I use this in my organization. So right. we've seen a lot of people who are quite interested in these areas. Yeah. That, that is excellent because then that means you have that cultural advantage. You don't have people resisting to the change. So that is, that is fantastic. Yes. So that was an interesting uh, discussion. So now uh, I would like to have insights coming in from Saiket Basu, head of sales with JK Paper. Over to you, Saiket, to share your thoughts. Uh, good evening, gentlemen and ladies. I hope I'm audible. Yes, you are. Yeah, you are audible. So uh, my esteemed uh, colleagues and friends from top management and manufacturing in pulp and paper industry, let me tell you that I represent from the sales of JK Paper so and marketing and sales. So uh, my thoughts in this data analytics and how to utilize data for relevant to the theme that is to manage bottom line and profits of pulp and paper, that would be... Uh, limited to marketing sales demand sensing and uh, supply chain side because you have already heard a lot about how we can improve our operational efficiencies and with uh, stalwarts like mr anil kumar and others that i am nobody to add any value to that so uh, from the once the material is manufactured and from then when the supply chain starts where the supply channel and the the sales happens there is also a lot of data which can be crunched and analyzed and utilized and uh, internet can be used and overall uh, what i'll say data management can be done to garner maximum possible uh, benefits for our industry uh, first of all we have to understand that what are the triggers which influence profits in pulp and paper beyond plantation raw materials operational efficiencies it can be logistics. Logistics is as big as five to 10% in the paper industry because we are an industry who operates at 50 rupees per kg. So we have to understand that somewhere five rupees per kg means 10% of the 
of our cost sometimes becomes logistics to the end consumer. So that's one of the major, I think, triggers where we can utilize data in a very interesting way and make our product more affordable and make as well as more profits for the industry. Uh, JIT inventory management, tracking of customer databases, and prediction of cyclicality in demand. These are, I think, the other uh, pointers which can influence the bottom line of the pulp and paper industry. Now, I have uh, just put my thoughts into four pointers, taking into all these aspects that what can be done. And I wanted to spend five minutes on that. One is market intelligence. Again, from the, again I said from the sales uh, and marketing and supply chain and logistics side, market intelligence. Second pointer should be digital sales enablement. Third should be pricing analytics. And fourth can be called as uh, trade promotion optimization. Uh, on the first point, market intelligence, I think first what data can use is that understand the micro markets granularity and the blind spots in sales, which we call, which we cannot be visible to the naked eye. Everybody knows the major converters and the major publishers. There is a world beyond that, which tracking by utilizing modern data mechanisms is one of the uh, one of the things which we can look at to. Uh, Multi-layer channel servicing eats away the profits of the industry as well as the customer. So that is where data can come up, where maybe geotagging of all outlets, geotagging of all converters, maybe capturing uh, data from uh, different sources from the internet or from good models uh, of digitized yellow pages lists of converters, trying to understand their consumption from different data triggers. That can be one of the major things in this. Second point in this is demand cyclicality handling through predictive models, which is happening in many industries across the globe now, and also in the paper industry somewhere. Uh, who can, this is very relevant in the last two years where we have seen the demand goes up and down in the view of work from home, in view of instant lockdowns, and then again opening up. So uh, demand sensing, demand cyclicality handling through historical data as well as predictive data can be a very, very important part for the industry. Uh, third is that what I will say is uh, the imports, exports data, the IPMA data, the FICI data, different data brought under one platform and their analysis done to understand the trades, trends in the same platform is something what I think uh, can bring uh, make or break for the industry. Primary sales predictors can be another point. The second uh, point which I was talking about was the digital sales enablement. In colloquial terms, we talk about the chatbot. The chatbot where the customer can get into direct touch with a mechanized auto response system and need not come to anybody in the sales or the dealer team to get their basic informations updated or their basic services met. Properly implemented, such data help can help in upselling, cross-selling between products, finding out the nearest dealers, the customer can understand where they can get the samples from, leads management, how when the lead comes to a salesperson, how it can be management online without a uh, human interface new product applications the customer doesn't know what to do is there a paper to handle it home to connect which company to connect leading leading them from that all types of permissions and permutations and combinations can be put into such interface to give the real benefit to the paper and print industry again when we were talking initially we said about the costs this is also a cost a huge saving of the cost like i talked about the market intelligence when we uh, break down the channel into smaller parts or directly reach the consumer. In the same way, by digital sales and enablement, we can handle the cost of selling. Of course, the voice of the consumer and the voice of the dealer needs to be captured properly between getting into these type of data interventions. The third point was on trade promotion optimization which is uh, what I will say that we many companies are running different trade schemes, especially in the B2C product and somewhere in the B2B also, where it is based, which can be totally based, analytics-based, slab-wise payouts, 
maximization of sales can be done keeping in budget into consideration by an homogeneity of the scheme can be controlled by taking correct measures and by doing a digitized approach to all trade promotions rather than on the basis of uh, on the basis of the way we do it today in india my last and most important point will be pricing analytics pricing analytics uh, what i will say is uh, something which is the core of uh, data where data can really generate value by saving costs for the customer by saving costs for the company i already talked about logistics which is one of the highest freight costs which should be optimized uh lead time it is a function of price again a customer gets something in 10 days and 30 days of course makes a lot of difference it's a part of the price and the price of the cost uh historical data of the customer accounts how to handle it through data synchronization between the manufacturer and the customer automated price communications to dealers to avoid ambiguity avoid human intervention and finally pricing waterfall dashboard type of thing which is very important which we are trying to think about in our company also where we can understand the pricing waterfall all over india sku wise uh product wise geography wise a certain dashboard by which can help us in decision making a predictive dashboard from data which is there in the system from data which is there in the market like mops like export data import data which can be captured and all can be conglomerated to take a decision uh secondary sales data tertiary sales data so that a uh, decisions can be taken on pricing basis on a day to day dynamic model i think that is one more thing and lastly international pulp parameters which can be which is the most biggest macro economic i think uh, factor for us for this industry in taking pricing analytics into consideration how we can modulate it in our day to day decision making uh, i think this is what i had to cover in terms of this uh, thank you for patient listening anybody has anything to say in that can yeah. i get it Thanks. thank you your for your thoughts uh, sakit so uh, do we have anybody any thoughts to share on this and inputs on what sakit just shared okay so now i would like to uh, move forward uh, by oh inviting uh, atanu chakrabarti senior vice president sales and supply chain with apl and would like to know his thoughts over to you mr atanu yeah yeah thank you ekta uh, for giving me this opportunity to be a part of today's discussion and good evening to all my learned friends of the pulp and paper industry uh, i would like to take off from where saikat has been discussing because i'm more on the front end uh, rather than because i'm looking up the sales and the supply chain part okay the main objective basically if we see reaping profits from the industry for is with the digital transformation in the pulp and paper industry is to improve the efficiency of the manufacturing process also to reduce the cost and provide visibility to the internal and external customer okay and our objective of embracing technology in apl we started actually we had the <coughs> sap uh, for us where the processes were already there and was in, inculcated into the sap process but we wanted to show to the customer that how we can increase their visibility and have a communication with them and that's when we started our journey basically i would like to share that experience uh, with you all is that in 2014 we brought in the sales force uh, which is basically a cloud based platform where you can access it from anywhere and that's where what we wanted was that we wanted to integrate and have the communication between sap and sales force now what we did was that through that cloud platform we gave it to our dealers okay and they were able to have the visibility in terms of how the order is being put in what the order has been what is the situation what is the status of the order and at the same time we were also able to give them a prediction in terms of when the expected date of dispatch would be because our main objective was to delight the customer 
And obviously, we started measuring the KPI of OTIF on time and in full. So what we see is that what has happened is basically with this technology, it's not only giving, giving uh, visibility to the dealers, but also internal visibility because whatever data was there, yeah, please. Whatever data was there, we were able to have it in that platform. And subsequently, we were able to analyze it. And, and basically for the internal and also for the external customers, we were able to share it, okay? Once the visibility was there, okay, the customer basically had an impression that, yes, I can see what is happening within the organization, which I'm a part of as a channel partner. And at the same time, I'm able to see where, what is the status of my order. And that visibility actually improved the OTIF from a level of 66. And it has been a long journey from 2014 to 2000. Uh, today we are in 2021. And we moved to a level of 93%. So it's a huge jump, but it has been a very <clears throat> great progress as we moved on. And this also had an Im impact also on the production side also, because finally what we do is, whatever we do, we do it for our customers, right? So <clears throat> we had to bring in the efficiency in the manufacturing process, streamline the process. And I think one of my colleague is there already. He will take you through what are the things which we have done in the operation side so that we integrated the operation side and the customer side requirement. And that's how we were able to get to this level. And coming to Saikat's point, I think we have all this, what you have been saying, that we need the waterfall, we need the analytics in terms of pricing and all. It's all there in the system of uh, Salesforce. And today what we are trying to do is basically, we want to go a one step forward in terms of we have, we have upgraded ourselves from the SAP uh, to the SAP HANA. And then I, we will be moving from Salesforce to a hybrid model where actually the customer, when he gets onto that platform, he will be able to see the entire thing, not only his order status, but his <clears throat> what is his payment status, everything is there on that platform. And then he can go in and interact with us in terms of putting the orders. This is what I wanted to share. Okay. I understand the internet of things are there. There are processes, there are sensors which are there. <clears throat> those sensors collects those data and then subsequently <clears throat> puts uh, all these all these data which is collected are then transformed into a cloud platform where we can obviously slice and dice, analyze and take corrective actions because if we do not embrace technology, we will not be able, because the, the, the market is changing, the marketing, market di dynamics are so, so fast changing and so challenging. If we do not embrace technology and if we do not go to that scenario of uh, uh, industry four, we will not be able to reap the profits, okay? That's it from my side. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Atanu, for sharing your any, insights. Any questions from anybody? Yes. Uh, so any questions or any suggestions or any thoughts what Mr. Atanu have shared? Kamal, you would like to uh, I think Mr. Suresh provide your views on uh, Mr. Atanu's insight. Mariana has already, yeah, Mariana has already asked one question. I think uh, uh, Saikat and Atanu can respond to that. In addition to that, I have a small query on uh, what do you think about channel performance management and uh, reach expansion? Because uh -huh. in certain industries, we have found that uh, expanding the market, finding uh -huh. new customers, new dimensions of the product, that is reach expansion and build the uh, loyalty in the channel. Uh -huh. building, uh, uh, customer, customer loyalty is one part, channel loyalty. Uh, which mm -hmm. I think Saikat also mentioned about managing the trade and promotions effectively. And uh, do you think there is a bigger role which can be played by a reach expansion or channel performance management? Yeah, see, uh, obviously you have to have those databases which is there. We also have uh, the customer technical side which is there on which, for example, <clears throat> we have people uh, getting into our platform and saying that, okay, these are quality issues which are there. Similarly, we have customers who, where we have 
uh, where the sales people goes into a call and they try to understand from them what kind of paper they require, what is the application. Okay, that's getting captured also over there. So we have a database which comes in with the with 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 uh, when somebody goes into the market, we have those databases which is there, and that also gives us an opportunity because when the when the salesperson goes over there, there won't be competitor who is there, and whether we would like to get a share of that and move into that particular uh, customer or not is what we can analyze through those uh, data which are punched. Uh, by the sales officers which comes into the sales force and we can analyze that and that's how we have been able to increase our reach and also the penetration level into the market uh, i have seen mariana's question so if it is okay i can reply it now of course yeah uh, uh, mariana i think you wanted to understand that how is the market demand changing or the banning of uh, single use plastics and how the date can, that can be merged in the data models. So uh, my response to that will be like this, that uh, the banning of single uh, uh, use plastics will have a huge impact on every part of the paper and mainly packaging board segment, uh, especially the food segment and the food service boards segment, which is uh, which will be drastically changing in the next two, three years, and all predictive models suggest anything between 12 to 25% growth in paper-based medium as compared to plastic-based medium. Uh, so that is the which we are seeing in terms of the marketing demand, market demand, especially in boards, in packaging boards. That is the part. Now, whether this data is being properly captured and in the market intelligence or not, Yes, it's a very relevant question. What we are doing, I can share. I'm not sure whether we are going on the right path or not. What we are doing, we are trying to capture all types of paper, uh, plastic, or even not even plastic. There are other packaging applications like you can talk about wood, you can talk about steel, you can talk about aluminum packaging, all types of packaging applications possible. We look into a just we look into an application and we think about it, how it will move in the next five years. Basically, it's a qualitative data. It's very difficult at this stage to make it quantitative. Uh, but from the qualitative data, there can be triggers and thoughts coming out that which are the applications which will be moving. Of course, that this will be a very interesting subject for all the data technicians and data architects to think over how this qualitative thing can be actually quantitatively formulated. That what will be the impact of the plastics to paper movement. I don't know whether I couldn't answer it, but I mm -hmm. tried whatever I could. Thank you, Sekhar. No. Yeah. Yes, Mariana, please. No, I was saying thank you very much for that answer. I, I wanted to, you know, get you get your insight on, on, on that trend. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. So thank you. Uh, yeah, quickly moving on to our next insights coming in from Somajit Mukherjee, is the Chief of Sales and Marketing with Imami Paper Meals Limited. So over to you, Mr. Somaji, to share your thoughts on this. Good evening. Thank you very much. I hope I am audible. Yes, you are yes. very much audible, Somaji. Thank you. Oh, well, I think uh, Saikat and Atanu has given a perspective of the marketing and the sales where the requirement of the data. I would like to you know, go on a broader picture that uh, we have seen the transition from maybe 10 years, 15 years back how the system has worked, how the automation has worked for our industry from last 10 to 15 years and how rapidly the automation and the uh, system driven thing are being uh, used in our system, be it production, process, marketing, finance, accounts, everywhere the technology or the software or artificial intelligence is becoming a more, most important requirement. And it will be, as days passes by, it will be more and more uh, upgraded versions will be required because now we are used to it. Now people will now require real-time information. People will require feedback, efficiency, all on basis of now we are in a very, very competitive world. If in the process industry, if you see the any new machine that has been incorporated or being bought, 
this auto QCS, DCS, everything is or uh, there is a, a software based thing is there. So no manual intervention will be there. So we would require a very high upgraded information system traveling across the process industry and new software development is being done so that all real time pictures can be, you know, uh, captured and we can that can be transformed and synced with the other information. And so a holistic information is given to the top management. And any new company, any old company, everybody is uh, transpiring for the getting to that kind of software development or the information system flow. Be it uh, the process from real-time data, how the operation so that the productivity can be increased, to the rewinder segment where the finishing is being done, to the shitter, to the go down. Today, uh, warehouse management is a very important way where the lot of wastages can be stopped a lot of uh, you know dead stocks can be uh, uh, not used uh, created so there is a huge kind of software and uh, information system which is being built up by all organizations small or bigger and i think everybody has to bring into the systems the softwares be it sap or erp everything has got all the all the information available we have to know how to get the information in a right way so the way that information can be taken out how the information can be taken out from there and how that can be you know uh, presented to everybody and it is carried as a tool for everyone and everybody understand this tool is most important requirement for everybody that is most important to know in sales and marketing, what Saikat was telling, market intelligence, be it market intelligence or transport or logistics, everywhere the real-time data is very, very important to give service. If we do not have the data or the internet system, now at, with a call, we can you know, locate every truck, every transport vehicle is being tracked and where it is, and we can give real-time picture to the customer. So this was not possible maybe a, a five year, 10 year back. So we have adapted. So the way India or the Indian paper industry is adapting to technology is very good. Maria, I'm telling you, we are going very fast. It's not that key, we are slow. And we will be uh, reaching to the level of the European and the American system very fast. And we are, we are very big adapters of new technology and we are doing it. And in due course of time, be it uh, Atanu was saying that we are all sapped to HANA, we have all shifted. So we have all data available and we need more new modules, be it the CRM, SRM systems, everybody is in present. So paper industry, which was usually a non, only the uh, real technology was on the machine, now have diversified themselves and became a more system driven, more software driven, more uh, you know information system driven because end of the day every profitability of the organization will depend on how the productivity can be increased which was all on a manual level now has changed to system level so saying that i would say my take will be that the more development from the uh, companies like you which you have given us more insights you give to us we will drive us faster because end of the day we all want to have the increased productivity level in our production system, be it our marketing system, the real data system, wherever it is possible. But how the most important thing, everything is available, but we are not able to capture in a proper way. And the new softwares or the new uh, data management systems gives a very important picture to uh, us. Coming to Atanu's one information, when you're going to a customer, when you are discussing, even there is a technical question. If you have the tools with you available at your hand, you can reply and create, uh, give the answer to the customer immediately. So the value proposition today, the entire business is on value proposition. How, what value you create at customer's end, the process industry, uh, the, the production, how much value it gives to the marketing and to the company, all is a value proposition. I think, uh, this database management or the uh, software-based management, which is being you know inculcated from last five to ten years and has advanced like anything, is a definite boon to the paper industry, and we look forward to much more development in there. 
and that will definitely uh, make the industry much more productive in due course of time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Somajit, for sharing your thoughts. Uh, any takeaways or any uh, thoughts from coming in? Uh, Kamal, you would like to share some uh, views on the insight shared by Mr. Somajit? Yeah, I have a quick question for uh, Mr. Somajit. A lot of places, people, uh, there's a dilemma in people's mind to have uh, their own in-house software or small point software developed, or one should go for a standard platform where, uh, which is proven and established in the industry, and then implement it in a way to get benefits of that. Which is the better journey in your perspective to build See, a software for your need or adopting a platform? See, tailor-made software are definite requirement, but uh, definitely if you ask me uh, on a long-term perspective, see earlier what used to happen is, I tell you very frankly, these were all cost-driven things. So initially, uh, the mindset of paper industry or any Indian industry was to invest on the capital equipment first. And then uh, the, you know, the bigger chunk used to go there and the software development or this platform expenses were given the secondary uh, you know, priority. So what used to happen was that that time, uh, you know, local or uh, small softwares or anything has been uh, uh, bought out, which I feel was, is not a long-term uh, solution. We definitely have to, you know, I have worked in uh, ERP and SAP system. I think it's, it's definitely the changer, change a game changer to when you see in a long-term perspective. And definitely, and more and more modules coming up, I think this definitely helps the industry as a whole to on long-term profitability increases. So we should not be short-sighted and we should go for a much more, you know, uh, I'll say uh, used or being better uh, systems, which I've been in, uh, running and which on continuous basis uh, upgrade, itself, upgrade itself in a continuous process. Uh, but definitely some areas where, you know, generalized system cannot take care of, uh, like, you know, Optivision was one of the software which used to do, do the decal matching for the uh, sizes because we have orders. So an Optivision is one software used to decal match so that, you know, the maximum decal can be used for a uh, packaging board or paper making. Uh, otherwise, it was used to do manually. Now, this Optivision or there are small software came. But Optivision's uh, database uh, or the Optivision's data output is much, much better than there are small softwares like, uh, you know, uh, locally available Netic and others, which do the, only the decal matching. But in long term, Optivision gives a, you know, database which where we see where the problem goes on during a period of time, where these small softwares definitely give only a single solution or a daily work can be done. So, you know, later on that, you uh, know, you analyzing the things becomes very difficult if you do not have a standard software. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mr. Somaji. Uh, now we have insights coming in from Mr. Anil Singh, Vice President with Genus Paper and Boards Limited. So your thoughts on this, Mr. Anil Singh? You are on mute. Yeah. Thanks, Ekta, for inviting me and good evening to all uh, dignitaries of uh, pulp and paper industry, uh, Anil sir, and so many uh, senior people. So basically, uh, right now, uh, I am with Genus Paper and Board as Vice President Marketing, Sales and Marketing. So Genus is into manufacturing of craft paper. So here, when I joined two years back, like uh, during uh, the 19, actually. So at that point of time, uh, the orders and all they were through email and uh, email whatsapp and sms that was going on so what we have done we have done the digitalization of order complete order to delivery module so that was the starting point actually so which has benefited so now like we have a, a started web portal for order to delivery module so a complete order for dealers consumers and all so they they punch the order and they and the processing and all is being done through software through decals decal matching software so that was a so this has helped us a lot uh, during the lockdown period and all when the uh, this uh, covid lockdown was there 
so as far as this uh, this i relate with industry 4.0 and uh, basically when the 5g 5g fifth generation network that will come and uh, the smart uh, manufacturing that will come so basically the indian uh, paper industry is already geared up and uh, definitely uh, the it will see a change and in times to come basically if we see the data points and all is like the as rightly said by saiket uh, sir like um, basically if you see like look, most of the core here it is basically b2b in craft so mostly most of the corrugators they are importing machines from bhs or, or from some italy and also they already have the uh, like data uh, touch points are there sensors are there everything the sensors is there so there is no manual intervention is there so that machine so that machine costs are approximately 50 to 60 crores when the corrugators printers they are investing so much so uh, then the gsm even gsm testing and moisture and all that is all completely automated so the industry now the paper industry need, needs to gear up as far as the uh, indian market is concerned so like if we see the way back uh, in india like uh, we have ipma has taken up like import lots of import was coming up so we were uh, we were pushing hard why imports are coming because if you see any imported paper the as far as quality is concerned that is so much better much better, as far as i am i'm talking of the craft basically the craft segment only industrial so that way if when this uh, 5g uh, industry 4.0 will come when machine to machine will talk and then uh, the this uh, cost uh, like uh, cost and all uh, that will be also one of the factor would be there so in that way as far as marketing side is concerned so we should have like a customer a geo a geo tagging that was a uh, uh, shared by saiket like uh, geo tagging so that way if complete data capturing that artificial intelligence and all that can help us in minimizing cost sales and marketing cost as and uh, uh, so that would be a great benefit to complete paper industry and if you see globally globally like uh, if you see the, the news print all industry is already going down the major expansion which is coming globally that uh, it is coming in southeast asia only there is no expansion which is coming in uh, neither the europe or uh, any america uh, so this is, so the uh, growth of paper which which is uh, like uh, expected to come that is in the indian market only india and china this is southeast asian market which is basically going to grow so this is what my i uh, take uh, on this thank you uh, thank okay. you mr anil singh any thoughts on what mr anil uh, singh have shared uh, mariana you would like to basically share your views on what mr anil singh's insights are hold on i am here um i i think i mean to me you 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 guys are really opening my my view of how digitalization affects not only the operation side of of the processes but also you know the sales and marketing side and and how it is all interconnected and i think when we talk about the value chain that's what we're talking about how to how to merge different uh different sides of anything that has to do with pulp and paper manufacturing and servicing the customers to the industry so i'm right now i i am at awe and and learning so much from from the different insights that we that we are receiving from from our different speakers so thank you thank you so much anyone else uh, or we can invite ashok kumar singh so uh, moving on uh, i would like to invite mr ashok kumar singh vice president operations and meal manager andhra paper limited to share his thoughts and views on the subject over to you mr ashok thank you ekta and i hope i am pretty audible if not i think you can give me a feedback so i can improve no, on mr. it mr ashok you are completely audible thank you uh, it was really uh, really it was a pleasure hearing uh, you know the likes of anil kumar ji and many others uh, mr atnu my colleague was already has shared a uh, view and he was on the panel so i would actually take the discussion one more time back to the operations uh because i come from operations so uh i would be giving you a kind of what actually uh in my understanding in the understanding of 
what we feel at Andhra Paper, uh, the digitization of the manufacturing means to us and what is there in it for paper industry as a whole. So uh, to begin with, let me, let me tell you that uh, the, uh, the work that we have been doing so far in last uh, seven, eight years, uh, we have been doing a lot of uh, work which can be categorized uh, as a uh, you know, part of uh, industrial uh, internet of things, or you can say the digitization, or you can say some part of, you can say industry four. Uh, like uh, I, I've got uh, people from o OSI soft also. So we have been actually using a number of products that have actually put us uh, uh, on the advantage sites for using uh, uh, this uh, number of products uh, in the automation uh, segment, which have given some capability of operating on the cost efficiency of it. So what we have found is that, uh, see digital manufacturing or taking our industry to industry four has a potential of the cost reduction of the total cost base as high as 15% of our uh, cash cost reduction potential. So this, this, this very definitely makes a very good business case for any industry to go for uh, any sort of automation. I will actually categorize all the digitization uh, into broadly say three categories. And they, I'll just, I would like to touch upon what potentials individual category is having. So the broadest category, what we have is the artificial intelligence and what you can say, the analytics part of it. When I was talking about last seven, eight years, we have been doing a lot of work, which was actually part of artificial intelligence and analytics we are consolidating our operations to go for predictive analytics. And all this we are using to basically optimize our operations. Uh, if you'd say artificial intelligence and analytics, we have made use in, you can say the fiber yield, chemical consumption and energy consumption optimization. And then predictive maintenance has been one area where actually we have used uh, a lot of automation and that has actually put us uh, among some of the finest industry in terms of downtime uh, on an annual basis, or you can say in other words, machine availability. And that has actually added us to improve our uh, this machine OME and machine OE overall equipment effectiveness. So this all put together, this has a potential of our, around nine to 10% alone. Then we come to automation. So automation, it can be a logistic automation. A couple of my friends from the sales and marketing segment, they were actually referring to it, but there is a lot of potential that we can, we can do it. Of course, process automation, uh, sometime back Anil Kumarji were, uh, were saying that the first uh, uh, memory he was uh, sharing with us was of the QCS installation for the first time. So that was pretty much automation coming to operations in paper mill. So that is the time from where we have started on. And now it is coming to, to you can see almost a lot of other areas which we never imagined. Think of a situation where there is a breakdown and minutes after the breakdown has taken place, there is a prediction how much percentage of OITF, OTF will be reduced as an impact of this breakdown at the end of the month. That is the predictability if we actually shift from what we are today to what actually industry four can make it. So, the basic, uh, what I can say, the potential I see is improving the operational efficiencies by implementing, uh, there are a lot of products. 
uh, you can say the the advanced process control apc modules are there number of people are actually offering it that this basically works on a kind of an algorithm which optimizes all your process parameters and finally uh, makes uh, you know you 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 get out with a product with 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 minimum resources put into it so there are a lot of products already existing in the market and there are products which actually a lot of companies are offering and working further to optimize we have done uh, as i told you in the uh, in the condition monitoring that we do for predictive maintenance we had been having a, a a kind of approach which used to be called as a preventive maintenance but that used to be very costly to us so then we gradually shifted to predictive maintenance and that has actually saved us a lot of our resources made us more available in terms of our machine uh, predictability and as mr atul was referring to how the ot has improved it has improved because we were more available on our machines what we are taking up as a as a order management system what we are committing we are delivering it so that can only be possible when your machines are more predictable your systems are more reliable so uh, this uh, example of condition monitoring which helped us to stick to the preventive maintenance is one good example another would uh, i would like to share with you is the the advanced process control uh, for for getting the fuel efficiency in the lime clean area where is it basically optimizes all the process conditions and brings you a condition which will require minimum uh, furnace oil or any fuel so this is all the use of algorithms to predict what is going to be the next process condition now we are from the from the analytics now we are shifting in the same predictions uh, same uh, set into the predictive analytics we are we have been using pi which is basically a kind of a process information system which we we even have a had a capability of uh, getting our process conditions important key parameters our machine rops our machine down times and pulp fiber line uh, down times right on our mobiles even when the senior executives are traveling uh, we we used to get a web based mill view which used to tell whether the digester is running or not whether uh, the major machine is under shut or it is producing in what grade how it is running so all these things when they become more effective for us and they are all to our service it basically uh, you know in in a in a net sum it basically improves our predictability to the customer so finally uh, what we actually get out of this is a better and more efficient operations we are always cost efficient and we are more predictable and what we are actually Uh, committing to the customer most of the chances that we will live to our otif and of course when we are optimizing it the quality is a by product quality will come by itself when we are maintaining all the optimum parameters so it is it is it is bound that what product we make is meeting all the norms so look at the potential this industry for is having for paper industry we are a continuous process industry if one thing is stuck the whole thing stops it is not like a many chemical industries which are batch industries one part of the section you can stop and rest of the mill is running it is not like that in our case for us the bigger is the plant costlier are the mistakes so uh, what we have actually learned and experienced from uh, whatever automation we have actually done in our system whatever uh, artificial in uh, artificialness that we could able to use is that uh, digitization of manufacturing is not only essential it is also need of the hour now you see how this covid is changing uh, the market scenario every now and then every day we feel that okay now the condition is coming under control the next morning we find a different scenario so our predictability our our you know the capability of running at various different different production rates is now much more required than 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 ever so uh, these things 
uh, if we if we actually digitize our manufacturing operations, if we uh, go for process automation, if we go for using of analytical uh, predictive analytics, and if we use actually this uh, artificial intelligence Internet of Things, we are actually going to handle this situation. We don't know today market is bad. Tomorrow suddenly it comes up. Once the corona comes to normal, we should be in a position to deliver to the market. So these things can only come up and make uh, we can make ourselves uh, uh, capable when we have the uh, the the manufacturing so flexible and so predictable, and that is only possible if we are actually having a lot of automation, a lot of intelligence and uh, predictive analytics used into it. So this is what actually uh, comes to my mind. There are a lot of things uh, some of our friend was telling about the talent or the skill requirement. Um, I think one of the challenge which we might be facing in coming times is that in the leadership team of our paper mills also, there are very limited people who are very much you know, uh, keen on uh, automation, who, who actually come from the, the IT field. So the decision making uh, has to be uh, something very challenging for us. So uh, that is one area. But at the same time, what this automation and this uh, using the artificial intelligence can give us, there is a lot of talent shortage in the paper industry. I'm not talking about uh, the engineers uh, that uh, actually run the department. I'm talking about operators. Anil Kumar, you were referring to this operator's uh, uh, skill and potential capability. Actually, we'll depend a lot. Still, uh, automation is there in many plants, but still we depend a lot on the skill of operators, skill of senior fitters, even, even to that extent. So if we bring in this automation and AI, Actually, uh, I can I can one thing I can assure seeing the trend is that a lot of physical and you know the the skill the necessity will reduce because optimization will take its own course. Our dependability on the age-old operators who are skilled in one particular thing and run uh, these things in one fashion our dependability on them will definitely reduce. Uh, I'm not saying that it is, it is, it is uh, not good to have uh, experienced operators in the system. It is always good, they are the assets. But what I'm trying to say is that the system cannot depend on a particular individual or any particular kind of, uh, you know, whether it is operator, whether it is shift engineer, the system has to operate by itself and that automation is the only thing which can make it happen. And that also, as I said, bring the quality also uh, to more, you know, variability reduction. The best thing what AI is doing is giving us a command on variability reduction. At Andhra Paper, we have a flagship program called Manufacturing Excellence, where our focus is uh, building the cost reduction potential of the mill, and that all is, uh, actually about reducing the variability, your quality variation, your brightness variation, your uh, different quality specs variations, there are a lot of variations. Using more higher consumptions are not very detrimental. The variability is very detrimental. We cannot uh, be consistent to, the, uh, to our customers. So those things, the variability and our troubleshooting, lot of things, immense potential, I will be, uh, taking a little more time, but uh, I just wanted to say more and more about it because I'm really uh, finding that it is it is giving us a lot of capability. So this, these were my views, uh, Ita and rest of the members. Uh, if anybody is having a question, uh, please. Praveen, you would like to comment on the views uh, inside shared by Mr. Ashok Singh? Uh, thanks, uh, Mr. Ashok. I think you have really laid down the complete uh, you know, operational insight about the data-driven strategy, right, from taking the right data from the automation, uh, where, uh, you know, other panelists also talked about automation at L1, L2 layer. Uh, taking this particular data from, and, and I'm pretty sure you also highlighted about the Pi systems, uh, part of it in the overall automation, where data rightly comes at a 
handy for the you know guys to manage the data and take it to the right decision at the AIML. Um, I think Definitely. the way this is the way you know we advise and uh, consult our uh, cons customers when we really talk to them. We always tell them you know how data can bring value at every level. I mean, like you know, and when operator starts using the data, he is actually creating a value out of it. Next level, when it goes to any of the you know analytics layer, it is creating a value, and that all things will become a valued advantage for AIML to bring more uh, benefits out of it. Fantastic, I think. Um, I'm great. You have uh, summarized the overall data-driven strategy for analytics. Thank you for that. Thanks, thanks, Ravi. Kamal, Ravi. you had something to talk. Yeah, I just wanted to ask uh, Mr. Ashok, when you look at a solution, it is let's say technology form, and another element is people, uh, which have to adopt the system, and the third element is related to the way it is implemented. Your partners who implement that which one is more important which one is less what is the mix of these three elements the technology which we are trying to adopt then uh, the people internal team who is put in uh, implementation who the core team which implements it and the partners what is the right mix according to you which is a successful model yeah uh, kamal i would try to uh, answer you in, in this way um, as always, it is basically a mix of all, but which is more significant in this. Uh, of course, when the solution is, is, is actually tailor-made or you can say complete in itself, it is more forgiving. Uh, it actually allows uh, you to have a moderate uh, understanding of it and still it will uh, actually help you, uh, you know, direct you in a right, uh, right way rather than uh, having a pitfall in it. So it is very important that what solution you are actually resorting to, what you are opting for. Uh, for example, uh, the PI, which Pra Praveen was actually referring, uh, there are uh, other, there are uh, many, uh, at the smaller platform, there are many other solution providers. Some startups have also come. Uh, but actually, uh, the industry domain experience also matters a lot. If you are taking a solution from somebody who has a domain experience, so the solution itself will be having a lot of uh, detailing in it, and it will avoid you to commit any mistake. So technology, what solution you are choosing, that is definitely very important. Um, coming to the, uh, the, the people part, those who are going to use it and implement it, uh, I think it is it is like uh, it is like uh, uh, it is a cause and effect uh, system. If you know the the uh, the manufacturing system, the workforce is having a mindset, and they all they only believe results. If by use of some predictive analytics or if by use of any uh, if we are solving their problem, they will believe and they will they will actually uh, they will uh, buy this idea of uh, go, going for automation. If it is only increasing your documentation and it is not giving you any solution, then soon you will find people will detach. So people engagement comes when they find that they are actually growing by themselves as individual by using this equipment and the company also they are contributing in growing by improving results so actually what i have found is nobody wants to be bad even our any paper mill you can you can say everybody has some ambition of contributing so if they get the right solution get and it is all top driven so if they get good leadership decision making and good uh, solution and maybe the implementation in the beginning will require some push. Once that push is there and once it is implemented for some time and the results started flowing, it becomes self-sustaining. People, because people start actually relating to that. So they are also growing, they are increasing, their knowledge building is also happening and they're contributing in improving company performance also. So it is, it is a win-win for both. So there is no reason that in any given mill, it will not be uh, bought in or it will not be welcome.
Yes. Thank you. So uh, there are a few points which Mariana has also mentioned in the chat box that we can see. So any thoughts on that? I actually just now I, I see. Uh, okay, so I'm just reading out this one McKinsey report. Major impact on AI is on factory output. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's the one by Anil Singh. So Mariana yeah. has mentioned in many occasions, predictive maintenance depends on vibration analysis. Is this Absolutely. also the part of your initiative? Absolutely. We are actually doing the vibration analysis, in situ vibration analysis. All the critical 19, actually we have categorized all the mill into critical 19 category. For example, our, our actually turbine is one critical nine item. Our continuous digester, uh, top separators kind of things are critical 19 items. So those 19, uh, those critical items are actually having the vibration probes installed in the equipment on the bearing size. And whenever, and it is continuously being monitored. So what Mariana says is perfect. Condition monitoring without vibration analysis is just incomplete. We do have that, Mariana. Okay. Thank you so much, Mr. Ashok Kumar Singh, for sharing great insights. So before we close, uh, do we have any thoughts coming in from Kamaldi, Mariana, Spraveen, or Shani? Or any thought leaders? Yes. Last thought, a takeaway kind. I think it is a great learning from all the industry leaders uh, and a lot of thoughts which have come on the table and we all need to assimilate it, understand various aspects because each word, each sentence spoken today has a lot of value and a lot of experience behind that. So there's a great learning for all of us uh, from the VCS team and uh, thank you for a valuable comments. So, uh, thank you all the guests. I think it was real insight and an interactive session. Uh, obviously, we were short our time. So that clearly shows that it was a real insightful and an interactive session amongst everyone. And I think a lot of good ideas and uh, technology insights were shared amongst each other. Uh, no doubt everyone being from the same industry sharing this kind of insights is really good to see that all organizations are heading towards trying to implement different kind of technologies to evolve and trying to see to it that uh, we move to a next direction and make India a huge manufacturing hub, which our prime minister also today is having a vision of making India as a $5 trillion economy. And I think uh, your vertical definitely plays a big important role um, looking at this is something which is really, really good. So thank you once again, everyone. Uh, and uh, thanks, Ikta. Thanks, uh, Praveen. Thanks, Mariana, for uh, making this uh, session more interactive, more fruitful. Thanks, all the dignitaries. Thanks, all the speakers uh, for joining in and staying along with us for almost like two hours, 15 minutes, and making this session a fruitful one. Thank you once yes. again. Yeah, yes. Thank you so much, and thank you for inviting us. Uh, just <laughs> an invitation from IPTA side. If Mariana could say a webinar on, uh, from IPTA side, so maybe we can have a larger audience uh, listening to her. Yeah. I think sure. One of you uh, and one of these days we can fix up a webinar on NIPTA. We'll have much sure. larger platform. We'll do that. And, uh, special thanks to Mariana uh, because it, it was three o'clock in the morning in the US where she's joined in. So I really appreciate uh, joining in such an early morning. Uh, so really, really appreciated. Uh, and thank you for making this session an insightful one. We will have you on much, much more godly hour rather than uh, your clock. <laughs> yeah. uh, Praveen, any closing remarks you would like to pass on? I think Shani Kyo summed up everything and Kamaldeep, uh, it was really great. Uh, uh, you know, we've been, uh, you know, I, I think Mariana would be uh, meeting global leaders in terms of talking to them, understanding. She also had a lot of insight about the uh, the other side of supply uh, logistics and demands part of it from uh, you know various uh, speakers and I, I think uh, there are multiple uh, data points which we have been there 
um holistically yes you the right point you mentioned you know we really have to look at it you know how do we really make the overall manufacturing uh, look at uh, a seamless way of transforming themselves into a industry 4.0 or digital transformation these are all jargons but then at the end of the day the end goal is one which is improving efficiency improving our financials you know making more profits and uh, you know ensuring that you know we are growing and progressing well um, that's fantastic and i think a lot of thoughts for me also in terms of learning for my end uh, and it's it's always been a great pleasure uh, yeah, listening to the leaders thanks a lot it's been yes. a great pleasure. thank you so thank you everyone thank you everyone so we have learned from all the thought leaders and leadership people who have joined us like how digitalization being one of the key drivers today you know for the entire process of paper industry and the industry has already recognized its potential and are pushing innovation to gain competitive advantages you know so on this closing note i would like to thank our partner vcs mariana and praveen <laughs> mariana thank you you are joining at morning 3 am i really didn't know that thank you so much for being here and all of our guests who took their precious time out and being here uh, it it was really a great session where we got to understand the various perspectives and insights from all the thought leaders we shall be updating the video link on our uh, website shortly and sharing with you all guys my team has already put a feedback form in the chat box you know so all the uh, guest speakers who were here you know it would be really great if you can share fill fill that form and you know share with us because that really helps us to improve also we have mentioned about one on one brainstorm virtual session with vcs if you are interested to know more about the solutions we would be really glad to connect uh, them with you so kindly follow us on linkedin instagram facebook and twitter for the webinar updates and insights thank you again everyone for being here have a nice weekend and please stay safe yeah and uh, uh, last thing um, ekta to you and chandra for taking this initiative and helping us uh, organizing this particular thing so really thank you for all the efforts that you and your team has also put in in making this uh, round table uh, youth success so thank you thank once you. again for you thank you everyone thank you thank you thank very much thank you thank you everyone thank you everybody thanks thanks, thanks. thanks. Bye. thanks thank to you. the people who attended and listened also yeah yeah and i think uh, stay safe stay healthy that's the only message we need to basically pass on right now yes yeah. stay safe yeah. thank, yeah. You. thank you thank you everyone thank you thank you, thank you everyone ciao bye see you thank you